Welcome everyone to the Apex Sunday podcast, where myself, Robert Ross, and John Dowsett discuss MotoGP and Formula One races and features. And before we get to the race of the 2022 Australian Grand Prix or Formula One, John, uh, the new rules seem to have shaken up the sport quite a lot, haven't they? Oh yeah, it's great. We're seeing performance all over the place. So for example, McLaren were nowhere the first race, bit better the second race, a lot better this race, but I have no idea mm -hmm. how they'll be the next race. What do you think? Right. It's really sort of typical of the olden days of motorsport and mm -hmm. how long is it going to take them to get their cars together? And can they get their cars yeah. together? Yeah. Um, because dynasties were destroyed and, and new dynasties created. Um, we are, I don't think we're going to see a dynasty like Mercedes again. Do you think the rules kind of, as they are now, eliminate that ability to come back strongly in a quick way because everything's so regulated now and you, you're just kind of restricted? I find that, you know, I, like is Mercedes going to recover next year and this year is a complete write-off and just figure out about next what, season? What it's done is, is Formula One used to be sort of similar to Can-Am racing, which is it was an open book. Right. There was a lot of things you could do. I mean, there were times when we had eight cylinder, 12 cylinder and 16 cylinder mm -hmm. cars on the track at the same time. Yeah. The first and they'd have different race. formulas, right. Sorry, different for formulas for turbo versus normally aspirated, that kind of thing. Right. But now it's so tight. What, what they've done is they've, they've addressed the problem of uh, no passing and no real dicing by, by making sort of a, an equal ground. Mm -hmm. and this is a brand new start for them in doing that. Right. Where are we going to go with this? Are we going to find another dominant team? Another? I don't think anytime soon. Uh, but we've had some wonderful things, as you say. You know, there there are teams that are coming up. Like, look at Alpine. One of the fastest laps, mm -hmm. second fastest lap from from Australia was Fernando Alonso. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and <laughs> where was Max? Max was That's number really six. Mm -hmm. Right. So where is this going to go? Mercedes could just be and also ran for the rest of the season. Uh, yeah. They seriously could. Yeah, my yeah, first got money, but my first Grand Prix that I saw live was in '93 in Montreal, and we had V12 Ferraris, V10 Renaults, and V8 Ford engines. You know, we had quite a mix, right. and they mm -hmm. all sounded different. And yeah, it was uh, interesting times. Uh, in Can Am, was it a multi class or it was just one class? No. Bring what you one want. One class, bring what you want. And that was the original, the, the Holy Rolling Thunder series. At the end of Can-Am, um, it was a shadow of what it once was. The Porsche Panzers came in and, and destroyed Can-Am. They right. brought it back again with two different classes. And right. they had you know the standard Can-Am cars. And then they had the two leaders, which were um, a lot of the Can-Am cars ended up being repurposed formula 5,000 cars, which were mm. five liter engines, very powerful cars. Right. Um, uh, originally the, the size of Can-Am engines was just ridiculously huge. They had <laughs> huge engines in them. Mm -hmm. And then they go up against the little, you know, Porsche 908s with tiny engines, but they could handle anyway. And did you I see those at uh, most port? yourself yes right yes right. yes uh, best races i've ever seen in my life still my favorite series i it was staggering mm -hmm. yeah there's a group is trying to bring back some form of can-am but what i looked at it was extremely minimal so i have no idea if that's ever going to go anywhere the key thing with can-am was you didn't watch it it wasn't you did watch it but it, it wasn't it wasn't a visual thing it wasn't a um, an oral thing. It was a body experience because when all those cars came by, right. at, you know, first first couple laps all together, my God, like it compressed your chest. It was <laughs> wonderful. Do they have yeah. vintage Can-Am races at most port? They do, but you know what? They aren't driving them in anger like they once yeah, did, and they don't have say, full fields. Right. Yeah, the vintage racing is more of an exhibition, I guess, because they can't, they don't want to destroy the equipment, right? <laughs> so. It depends on the series. There's a mm. lot of really good racing and vintage. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So should we move on to the qualifying for 2022 Australia? 
Absolutely. Okay. So one thing that I've noticed with qualifying right away is two drivers in particular seem to be responding to these new rules, and that would be Perez and Bottas. Perez is qualifying mm -hmm. much better, and mm -hmm. you know, Bottas is a surprise being in the Alfa Romeo, but he's qualifying very well. And the other thing is the cars are clearly moving around a lot more. They're far more difficult to drive than they looked like last season, don't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. I really like that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. And and it it is kind of surprising. There was um there was some nonsense going on between the Canadians. Mm -hmm. uh, and cl clearly it was in my mind uh, um a penalty I think was handed out to Stroll which was correct in my mind. Uh both of both drivers were adamant that it wasn't their fault that you know they were angry at the other driver and um you know if you look at the replays i'm sure that i'm hoping that stroll backs down a little bit and apologizes to latifi because it was clearly his fault yeah he just didn't know he was there and didn't look right before he turned right so right yeah one of the early one of the um underling drivers one of the drivers from f2 i believe it is or f3 was saying that he had a chance to drive i think it was the the uh, dri uh, driver for red bull Mm -hmm. uh, had a chance to drive the Red Bull F1 car, and he said that the mirrors are just useless, like completely <laughs> useless. There's like there's no real point in even having them. You know, right. with, with his car, he can sort of squint and he and he can see through his peripheral. You can see the mirrors and what's going on, but not in the F1 cars. And then you throw in, you know, the the porpoising, and yeah, yeah, it's going to be hard. I mean, I wonder if they should have. Uh put a little display in the LED like the backup cameras in modern cars. <laughs> a camera to see who's Yeah, it's not a bad you. idea. <laughs> yeah, because I've idea. heard that it's it hard to see. Might be a little see. bit distracting. Yeah, well, I've heard it's been hard to see in the mirrors for quite a number of years now. So you know, I'm surprised mm -hmm. we don't see that more often. Uh, mm -hmm. We also saw that Haas didn't do as well this race uh, as they did the previous yeah. two. Schumacher did get into Q2, but Magnussen didn't. Yeah, and Williams as a team that's not really shining under these new rules at all in qualifying different story in the race, of course, <laughs> but that that's pretty remarkable. Bottas was out. This is, did you hear the stat out of Q3 for the first time in 103 races? So he's been in Q3 yes, for five yes. years consecutively. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's pretty amazing. But obviously yeah. I think this circuit shows that at least for top speed, some of the cars just were not suited for this whatsoever. And Alfa Romeo, right. you know, they had to drop down as well as Haas in qualifying. So, and then we had to look at poor Aston Martin. Oh yeah, look at Aston Martin. I mean, that uh, you know, it sort of amazed me that you know how is Larry Stroll going to pay for all of this because that's a very expensive weekend he had. Yeah, yeah, and rumors are with uh, Otmar leaving for Alpine. You know, he's kind of implied that Stroll Sr. is a bit of an interferer in the running of the business. So oh, I could see that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most great businessmen know when to step away and let others who know what they're doing do it properly. And right. surely he's done that in his business career, but perhaps it's a different, a different or baby with the Formula One team. I don't know. I mean, he's got a lot of right. money, so I'm kind of assuming, but. Perhaps other You've people also got to remember. No, there's there's something very different about Larry Stroll. Larry Stroll is from Quebec, mm -hmm. and Quebec in Canada is sort of like being from Sicily. Right. It's a very different business world. You and I know that we've we've been involved yep. in big business a fair yep. amount, and we've watched you know CEOs um, uh, delegate properly. I can see how he doesn't, and how he is sort of like a mafioso type right. leader of his companies. Um, yeah. I can clearly see how that would, that would, <laughs> but it's not going to work in F1. 
Yeah, and it's uh, we'll have to see if he can understand that and take a step back because I mean you can't really base just because they're doing badly now. I mean they did a bunch of hires last season. They can't really have an effect for mm-hmm. this season. So if this season right. is a write off, okay, fine, but they they will need to improve next season for sure. So we also yeah. saw Alonzo, you know, his engine cut out and we got that red flag in Q3, but he would have been way up there. I mean, that was a remarkable qualifying. They were saying goal. he could have had pole. But yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but I think he would have been the first, at least the second row, you know, quite remarkable. I don't know, man. I mean, if he's, if he's up there, um, had the, the uh, right up there with the fastest laps, I don't know. He could have been right. He could have been on the front row. It could have been. It's possible. Uh, yes. And then science. Not his weekend, was it? Not his weekend. And it Qualifying wasn't his fault. Nights. None of it was his fault. None of it yeah. was his fault. And he's got the fastest car along with, with Chaz Leclerc. And mm. he just had his weekend screwed on him, didn't he? Poor guy. Yeah. Feel sorry yeah, for and him. Yeah, and it's strange that people are saying the championship's all over already. You know, like Max can't catch up. Nah. Science can't catch up. It's like there's what twenty. These are 20 new races people, left. aren't they? Yeah, these are new people. Anybody yeah, who's saying that doesn't get it. No, no. I mean, it's just there's sort of this temptation <laughs> to one thing represents everything rather than you know the full season. That's why we have multiple races because you know two races does not a champion make just because this guy happened to win two races no. in a row or something right no. so no. yeah and and crappy luck on red bull mind you i don't think it's crack, crappy luck on red bull i think it's red bull trying to pull off the same strategy that mercedes used last year and they're yeah. failing at it miserably right. uh, with reliability with their engine that's just a guess uh, but then we can throw in all the other factors anybody could come up now anybody mm-hmm. could come up it's, i doubt it's going to be haas but it could be alpine alpine could move up to the front row and mercedes could move up to the front row mclaren could move up to the front row and and we could have like a five four way battle for for winning races it could go like moto gp where we have what was it 24 winners in the last two years 24 something, something like, like that, that. Yeah. something insane it's uh, the other thing that people are bringing up is the ethanol mix. They've there's a ten percent ethanol in the fuel this season, and that yeah. seems to be troublesome for the engines. So yeah, would be. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what very, in, very our, hot. in our street fuel? Isn't it? It's ten percent. It is, and right? and the, I don't know what the percentage is. It it varies. Uh, regular is the highest amount of ethanol. Um, then there's a mid grade, and then there's there's a. Uh, um, the top grade fuel that you can buy, the premium fuel doesn't have any ethanol in it. Oh, uh, okay. Now, like I can't drive my TR6 with an ethanol based fuel. It just burns too hot. Uh, I see. Do you mm-hmm. recall when they brought in ethanol? Was there like a transformation? Yeah, it seems like remember? eons ago. It seems like forever. Yeah. Cause the lead thing was early seventies, wasn't it? When they finally started unleading gas and then I don't know. It's, it's an interesting... uh, 68, 69, 68, okay. 69 is when they started removing it. 68, you could still buy lead of fuel. 69, you couldn't. Oh, lead oh, okay. fuel, sorry. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, there were some theories that it kind of made a lot of people insane and poisoned their, <laughs> their minds, <laughs> all the fumes and so forth. So, but it was, it was the best lubricant known to man. <laughs> that, that's why it was there. Lead was in fuel as a lubricant. Right. So, yeah. Okay. And Charles, Quite a remarkable qualifying, almost half a second mm-hmm. up on the entire field. This is the first time we've seen sort of a dominant performance this year. And it could be just this circuit in that particular car and that particular driver. Mm-mm. So we'll see no. how it goes. Yeah, that's it, it. That car looks like it's good on on every, every race. On, I think it's going to be great on every uh, circuit. circuit. I think it looks like it's good on on slow corners as well as the fast corners. But we'll see, yeah. right? I mean, it's. Time will tell. Yeah, they, it's just it's, Adri- it's Adrian Newey getting rid of the porpoising um, <laughs> on on the Red Bull. If they can do that on the Ferrari, they can get rid of it and still run a low ride height. Then I think you're going to see Ferrari doing very well everywhere. But Leclerc said the porpoising didn't bother him. He said, "You look at the camera," and he said, "Oh my God, it looks awful." 
But right. when I'm doing it, I don't even really notice it. I find that hard to believe. Well, again, like we just said, like you can't base everything on one race. So Leclerc being right. dominant here, you know, it's it may he. I, I agree with you. He's probably going to win a lot of races and be competitive and go for a, you know in the fight for a win on probably mm-hmm. every race. But if he has this level of dominance, uh, that's got to be scary for for the others, and mm-hmm. you know that translates into the race mm-hmm. as well. So, anything about qualifying, or should we move on to the race? I thought I thought you know that the it was nice seeing Lewis beat George I, mm-hmm. because he got so um, schooled at the previous race. It was nice to see Lewis step up a little bit. Still kind right. of sad to see them so far behind. What were they? They were you know, over a second or about a, a second, no, over a second behind Paul. Um, yeah. that's, that's a, a long, long time. That's yeah. a long, long way. So mm-hmm. yeah, but it was nice to see that. And Carlos, I felt sorry for Carlos. I felt sorry for Alonso. Um, Alonso had a, um, mechanical breakdown. It looks like, uh, yeah. that cost, that cost him a much higher start point, but yeah. yeah. And Carlos would have finished his lap, but he couldn't because of the red flag. And right. that was a very fast lap. So, right. and do you right. find, kind of reminds me of Bottas last season. Like if he got back in the field, it's just a whole different story than starting up at front. And that's probably why, you know, he was on the back foot right away, unless he could make a great start. And from ninth on the grid, that's very hard in Formula One. It's a very crowded grid. Well, he also got messed up in the race too. He also got dealt a bad hand in the race. And and I know this is getting ahead of it, but, you know, he didn't um, get the benefit. George Russell got the biggest benefit and um, they should have sent him into the, into the pits. Yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll leave that alone. All right. So let's move on to the race. So regarding the race, great start from Hamilton and Russell. Uh, Russell got ahead of mm-hmm. Hamilton. Sainz fell back from ninth to 13th, and he was passed by Mick Schumacher. And I felt, uh, you are just saying Sainz had bad luck, but I kind of felt that he was trying to Verstappen his way through the field early on. You obviously have a different opinion. That's, a, that's an interesting way of putting it. Um, he's he's got to make a mark. and. Mm. And at the start, I don't think you can say Verstappen your way through the field. Because <laughs> no, I'm serious. Because at, mm-hmm. at the start of a race, everybody's got their foot in it, and and right. it's a matter of how you get your launch. That's all it is, and keeping your foot in it. You don't get out of it. You just don't get out of it. Yeah, corner one, you're gonna have to break a little bit earlier. That's pretty mm-hmm. standard fare on the opening lap. But if there's a gap, you're going for it. That's what it's about. Um, unless you're Lewis Hamilton last year and before, when you've got an end, when you've got a, a package that is just golden, and then you right. know that you can, you know, back off a little bit and plan your race a little bit better. So no, right. I don't have a problem with Carlos, uh, Carlos's approach, um, not at all. I I'm not going to say I have a problem with it. I'm just I get the sense that when you fall back and you need to score points and everyone's so competitive, you know, relatively, I mean, Carlos does have a better car than a lot of of other drivers, Mm -hmm. but it really puts, there's, there is no time. You can't, it's very hard to recover time in formula one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even if you have a very fast car and this season with the new rules, it may be even harder than it was before because, you know, last season we would see the Red Bulls and the Mercedes, at least Lewis and Max, really pushed through the field when they could. Mm-hmm. And we'll see if that's... I, I was kind of looking forward to see how far Carlos could uh, go through the field, but that... Me too. You know, that didn't happen this time, so... It didn't happen. It, it will I, happen. I would have liked to see that too. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, we, the, I have a problem with the DRS and the new setup 
now the DRS is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I think the idea was to keep it this season and see if they still needed it. So we'll see if they eliminate it for next season. I have a yeah. feeling it'll still be around though. Well, Alonso talked them into getting rid of one of the DRS zones. Okay. There you go. <laughs> At this race. There yeah. Were, yeah. There's going to be four and there was only three, right? So yeah. We saw a stroll pitting under the safety car twice to switch to the medium and then the hard tire to try to score some points for that team. You know, strategy is the other way to, to score points when your car is not very competitive. But yes. that, you know, didn't work out too well. And I noticed that uh, the commentators are talking about, I'm going to call it the Verstappen rule in the safety car where, and you mentioned this last season, you'd never seen another driver pull alongside another behind the safety car. And Verstappen's done that in Abu Dhabi in the last two races. But this race, that's been banned, so he wasn't allowed to do that. I did find it very strange that he was even allowed to do it at all in the first place. Mm -hmm. But again, I was making the assumption that that's just something you wouldn't do. But if it's not explicitly stated in the rules, then they're going to try stuff like that, right? Right. And, and, and as far as I'm concerned, in him doing that, it's sort of like looking at your competitors, sticking your tongue out at them. It's, it's not going to give you an advantage. You're not going to be there when the competitor sticks his foot in it <laughs> when it's time to go. Yeah. So it's really just, it's old school, school Muhammad Ali calling your competitor names and trying to psych them out. And that's just nonsense. <laughs> yeah, Autosport, Autosports, the race channel, did a small feature on this particular issue with Verstappen. And you're saying the FIA has helped him by this new rule because it never helped him when he was actually doing it. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> you know, now he has to stay behind and, and gun right. properly. So. Yeah, and I thought mm -hmm. the coverage of this race was spectacular. They've covered the midfield and the dicing way better than the previous race, didn't they? Yes, yes, in a wonderful way. And how much did you see um, the golden boy who got the triple crown and, and led from flag to flag? Yeah, We saw very little of, very of little. Leclerc. Yeah, and, and that's and the way it should did, be. That's the way it should be. But we did see his head bouncing up and down. They cut to some of that footage to show us what he was going through. Uh, but yeah, it was nice that they didn't just stick the camera on him and and see yeah. what he was doing. Yeah. And then we have our continuing story again about the new formula. And I guess oh. the technical freeze with COVID and all that, you know, chaos that may have happened you know, inside teams the last two seasons, uh, reliability again, Verstappen out on lap 39, apparently a fuel leak or a fuel hose leak. We saw an engine fire. Mm -hmm. And again, people are saying, oh, championship's done. He's way back. I mean, it is hard to fight back. If we look back at last season, you know, Hamilton's had a remarkable Not 30 fight back. points. No. Not 30 points. No. 30 points. That's the thing, because, yeah, because, uh, Leclerc could fall out easily. He could right. make a mistake. He could be hit. Anything, you know. Right. It's. it's I mean, a long he could. Season. He could. <laughs> the next at the next three races, we could see Max and Chaz on the front row and take each other out in the on, on, it, within the first few laps of the next three races, and we could see um, Perez win the world championship or Sainz win the world championship because those two guys are there. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think I think that we're going to see some other teams come up the ladder and we're going to see some tighter competition. And it, w the worst case scenario of this is you're saying great coverage. I was pissed off at the coverage. I was pissed off because there were some incredible dices going on and they, mm -hmm. they couldn't cover them all. So you yeah. have to go back and watch it a few times and go in, in, in car camera. If you wanted to see some of these phenomenal dices that were going on, cause they're going on throughout the field. There were some beautiful dices going on. Yeah, I noted anyway. like Stroll, mm -hmm. Gasly, Bottas, Alonso uh, down the field. The last 10 laps in particular, Alonso, mm -hmm. Zhou, Zhou, and Magnussen. You know, quite a lot of battles. And I yeah. guess, you know, they, they, they covered it as well as they could, I suppose. But uh, what commentary did you have? Still the sky? For the first time, we had, had uh, Julian Palmer and, and, uh, Anyway, it was much yeah. better. It was there was so much less hysteria. Yes. Yeah. yeah they tend to. Very good. I find the it's a it's a lower key commentary. Maybe that's why it appeals mm -hmm. to me. Sort of 
doesn't interrupt you viewing it kind of thing. It just right. sort of adds to it. Whereas Crofty is like, mm, what's this guy doing? You know, what's, what's he freaking right. out over? I'm having coffee and it's mega. <laughs> <laughs> so anything else about the race before we go on to rating it and the driver of the race? Not at all. No, just it was a good, good race. race, good coverage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Reliability issues. We had teams that were performing well. The last two races dropped down a little bit. McLaren was up a bit. Uh, don't mm -hmm. necessarily mean anything. Again, we'll have to see how the season comes out. So let's go to driver of the race. For me, it's a debate between Leclerc because he dominated and in a way that we haven't seen this season. I mean, when Max dropped out, I think it was eight or nine seconds back. And it mm -hmm. was uh, Albon coming up from, what was it, 20th to 10th, finishing in the points mm -hmm. in the Williams. Mm -hmm. He did all but one lap on the same tire, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to give it to Albon because... You, I, not to invalidate Leclerc, I mean, he had to reach and push and get the maximum out of his car, but so did Albon. And, you know, that's just a bit more of a, a difficult thing to do in that particular car. Who's your driver of the race? Well, you stole it from me. Albon? <laughs> um, I, 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 I was going to say Albon, but, um, and, and I don't want to say Chaz Leclerc, uh, because it was bizarre. He almost had it given to him. And then he has he has the car he has the car in front of him and he didn't have traffic. Uh, mm. I'm gonna have to give it to Lewis, mm. and I know that that's probably gonna get some grief from our viewers that I'm giving it to Lewis. But you right. know what? He's got he's got a sad ass car, and he, he came in fourth. It was and, all over the place, and he stuck car. with it, and he and he and he didn't give up. He kept going. He wasn't whining like he has in the past. And good on him. I, mean, right. I think this is a great learning experience for Lewis and, and, and sort of cutting him off at the knees and saying, look, at, you, you did this for years and years and years. You've always been at the top. This is what, this is what F1's about. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think I'm going to give it to Lewis just for his ability to stick with it. Right. I thought you might give it to Russell for his... I mean, he was on the podium last season in Belgium, but that was a parade. I mean, this is his first. It was a gift. Russell, Russell was a gift. Russell mm. was a gift. And, and, you know, if he hadn't had that, that unbelievable luck of being able to come in for fresh tires when he did, right. and basically a free pit stop, uh, Lewis would have slaughtered him. Right. So, right. yeah. I, okay. He did, he did very well, too. Don't, right. I'm not trying to diminish what he did, but mm. I, still, I think what Lewis did was pretty phenomenal. And uh, how would you rate this race then? I personally, I'm going to give it a seven because of the great I, coverage and I just enjoyed it. I'm mm -hmm. going to give it a six and a half. Right. Okay. What can yeah, make it better th for there's you? There's no, um, more dicing at the front. Yeah. It'd be nice to have more dicing at the front. Um, and maybe I'm being a little bit hard because it's early in the season. Uh, but it could be like this for the rest of the season. It could be, and it might not be Ferrari out front, but it was, um, it didn't keep me pinned to my seat for the whole race. Let's right. put it that way. Right. Yeah, I have a feeling Ferrari will be competitive every race, uh, whether they win or not. Who knows? Uh, Red Bull will mm -hmm. have to figure out the reliability issues. They've had three car, three failures in the first races. So, Mm -hmm. uh, does that mean it's going to continue? Not necessarily, but you talk about learning lessons. Uh, Max needs to learn to take this kind of these downsides as well, doesn't he? Doesn't seem to take it too well. <laughs> seems no. seems quite upset. <laughs> well, he's but, very you know, Mansell esque in that. Yeah, I mean, it takes all kinds to make make the world go right, and mm -hmm. you know, some champions are calm and level-headed the whole time and some are absolutely nuts and and everything in between so but um, you probably saw the footage of cutting to the pits with with max's daddy 
having mm -hmm. a hissy fit when when he went out like a, a hissy literally he was having a hissy fit like a like a an elementary school child yeah <clears throat> it kind of reminds me of like the mazepin situation with his father mm -hmm. oh you're giving a we have to make sure you're giving the equal car all this nonsense right so right and, i'm going to uh, take the know. money away unless you give them the number one car but pretty much yeah 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 um and just as an aside uh the italians have seized uh mazepin's mansion in italy <laughs> i don't know if you saw that 115 million dollar no. mansion it's no. uh the shell company but it's actually it's supposed to be nikita's one of nikita's mansions so you know they live in a totally different world obviously uh yeah I'm not, I don't, and they probably don't care no 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 well, it's, it's, well, it's probably gone. like care. them still yeah. taking taking one of our clubhouse sandwiches <laughs> right. yeah all right so anything else about this race nothing nothing okay. so we have uh imola next an old circuit some pretty good races last couple of years i'm really happy that it's returned to the uh the calendar after being gone for so many years mm -hmm. uh, me too did it leave after senna's death is that is that the cause if i recall correctly i don't think so but i i, I can't remember i have yeah, to be I honest i have it. no idea i can say that as you well know rob i am a fan of all the old tracks and mm -hmm. if you could only do the old tracks that'd be great like send them back to Kal kalami and south africa and and spa and have a couple right a couple at least two races in england you've got to have silverstone and you've got to have anyway yeah do they I have digress. germany at all here i'm just looking through the schedule no german grand prix that's ah, that's not good that's not right i did enjoy hockenheim even the new layout i thought it created some really good races so and the new nurburgring nothing wrong with the new nurburgring no no that's true <clears throat> oh well Okay, so we'll talk about uh, Italy next time. Talk to you then, John. And if you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, and comment. And we'll see you next time. Bye, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.